Hey guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. You know, in the mid-range Android device launches, well, there are just more and more as the days go on. One of which is the LG Vortex with Verizon Wireless. It's a member of the Optimus family, which, you know, recently they came out with numbers saying in 40 days, the Optimus family of smartphones, they've sold a million. That's pretty impressive for a device that's been out for 40 days, and it's pretty impressive for a carrier or manufacturer, rather, like LG, that doesn't really specialize in smartphones. They've already sold a million. That's impressive. Anyway, the Verizon version of the Vortex, it's available now for $79.99, and it's a decent mid-range device. It's running Android 2.2 out of the box, has a pretty decent display, 3.2 megapixel camera. Um, you know, and all in all, when you look at this versus something like the Citrus, this is much more equipped and is a better device all around, and it's only $30 more. Uh, so it's a good device. We're going to take a look at it in the review, but first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with two of these so we can give them away to you in the One Paw Bandit game. You know, one thing I like about Best Buy Mobile, you walk in, you get this device, you don't have to worry about mail-in rebates. The price is the after-rebate price, so you walk out the door with those savings versus waiting eight to ten weeks to mail in, you know, and deal with messy paperwork, things like that. Enough of that. Let's get into the review. LG Vortex, is it the best mid-range Android device in Verizon? We're going to find out, starting right now. Okay, here it is, the LG Vortex with Verizon. It's available now for $79.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate. So it's pretty pricey, $179.99 out the door prior to the mail-in rebate. You know, it's one of those pricing funnies, if you will, of the industry. You know, it's available for $80 right now at corporate Verizon. But if you look around, you may be able to find a better device. It's a little bit older, like the Droid Incredible. For, uh, for free. Like, for example, Best Buy Mobile is running the, uh, the Droid Incredible for free right now as part of their, uh, their December promotion. So, you know, it's one of those things. Check around. You know, it's a great mid-range device. I've been very pleased with it. It would be good for anybody who's looking to jump into Android as a first-time buyer or even, you know, with, as a second smartphone or a smartphone owner a second time around, rather. But, uh, but check those prices and, uh, and see what you find. Otherwise, it's a pretty decent device. A 3.2-inch display, 3.2-megapixel camera without a flash, though. Uh, but still decent nonetheless, and uh, running Android 2.2 out of the box, which I was pretty impressed with. Now, this one's interesting because the Vortex has, uh, on Verizon, has LG's customized uh, dock and uh, some of their customized apps, if you will, out of the box. So you can see, you know, the first thing that you greeted with is the, uh, is the clock widget and the weather widget, and then the uh, dock at the bottom. So let's take a look and see what comes on it. 3G Mobile Hotspot, Backup Assistant, Bing, City ID, uh, Kindle comes pre-installed, Mobile IM with Verizon, My Verizon Mobile, some cool stuff like Scrabble, Slacker Radio, Verizon Skype Mobile Service, uh, Tetris, the usual Verizon stuff, Vcast Music, Vcast Tones, Vcast Videos, and uh, VZ Navigator as well. So it's loaded with the typical Verizon stuff, and then, you know, interestingly enough, this is another device that uh, supports being out of the box with no, to my knowledge, with no Google search functionality. Uh, let's take a look. No, no Google search functionality out of the box. Now, there are hacks and changes and things you can do, but since this is a consumer review, we're not really going to cover that in here. So, for all purposes, out of the box being, and uh, it comes with several home screens, seven to be exact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just making sure I can count, seven. And you can see when you scroll between those, the little circles appear in the top center of the display that show you which one you're on. Otherwise, you know, it's pretty uh, run-of-the-mill Android device, in terms of functionality, it's very similar to a stock build, particularly when you start to get... LG's interface is pretty interesting because on the surface, you know, you have the dock and you have the customized applications drawer, but you get into something like messaging, and you notice it's pretty vanilla or pretty stock Android when you, uh, when you look at it, save for a couple things like uh, contacts. Let's take a look at those. I'm kind of jumping around, but let's take a look at the contacts list. You know, very similar to vanilla Android, and as is the uh, as the phone app, with some uh, minor exceptions here to the uh, to the numbers, the island keys are a little bit different, the shortcuts are a little bit different. So you know it's an open platform, so there's customization across the board. But LG's is the least uh, intrusive, as opposed to Sense or TouchWiz or Moto Blur, anything of that nature. In the phone app, you get the phone call log, contacts and favorites, the typical uh, typical stuff there, and uh, in contacts again. Very similar as you would expect. So you know we'll do we'll do old man just as an example. Uh, mobile eight six seven five three zero nine done. So in the context, you can see I go to Aaron Baker for example, and there's some minor changes as a result of uh, you know LG's tweaking of what's pretty much stock Android. You can see the tabs, info, history, my number, the option to call and text me from the display, which obviously that's not my number, but history. And uh, otherwise, pretty similar 
to the uh, to the stock app on uh, on vanilla Android. Let's take a look at the market. And I'm jumping around a little bit, but given that this device has Android 2.2, it'll be interesting to see some of the market changes for people that are used to Android 1.5 or uh, 2.1. Uh, some of the minor changes, for example, Google Shopper. Let's have a look at that, and you can see there are three tabs in this uh, in this version of Android Market. You have your about your comments and related. So we can take a look at the comments and they're just not that much has changed with the exception of the related tab, but you can notice the comments instead of being at the bottom of the uh, of the about part, they're now on their own separate tab. So you have that there. And once you install something, like let's go into uh, let's go down here and see our downloads for example. I don't have any downloads at the moment. Uh, I forgot that I reset this. Um, let's do Google, let's download Google Shopper for example. And you'll see that once it's downloaded we can enable automatic app updating so you know when those automatic app updates come through with the exception of some programs where you have to do it manually it'll auto update for you so it's one less thing you have to do uh, on your end let's take a look at the downloads we'll get Google Shopper in there it's installing now and now that it's installed we can jump back in and click allow automatic updating so uh, again you know it automatically updates on its own nothing you have to do on your part there are some programs that manually have to be updated like my Verizon mobile and a couple of uh, different ones in the Android market but for the most part, that's a pretty cool feature. Let's take a look at uh, messaging because I'm interested to see. You know, I've been reviewing 4.3 inch displays, 4 inch, dis excuse me, displays, 3.7 inch displays, the iPhone 4, you know, it's at the smallest, 3.5 inch displays. This is 3.2 inches, so I was interested to see how well I could type on the keyboard, you know, and it's been pretty decent for the most part. Uh, the Quick Brown Fox made a friend at the bar last night at the bar last night while not whole while so you can see I'm making some mistakes but while singing songs let's just do songs while singing songs so while they were doing karaoke or singing songs the quick brown fox made a friend at the bar now the Android keyboards all that comes on this out of the box. There are no, uh, actually, I'm sorry, this does come with uh, Swipe as well. So you have the option to use Swipe if you want to, uh, and for people that like Swipe, it's a great option. But you know, even with a 3.2 inch display, typing's not bad at all, and there are keyboard alternatives in the Android market if that's something that interests you. And of course, it works in landscape mode as well, and you can see the keys are slightly larger. Uh, no match to a 4 inch display or 4.3 inch display by any means, but still, you know, easy to type on the uh, in landscape mode. And then if Swipe's your thing, you can use that as well. Now on the topic of the display, you know, let's take a look at the browser, which again, you know, it's interesting to see this dock. All of these shortcuts are down here in the bottom. And let's see if you have the option to move those out. I have to take a look in the settings in a second and see if we can move those out if those are fixed. But, you know, again, 3.2 inch display, it's a smaller, uh, smaller display for browsing. But let's see what that looks like. And we'll load up phonedog.com. Otherwise, typical Android browser uh, options, new window, bookmarks, windows, where if you uh, open up another window and you want to go back to PhoneDog, for example, you can just hit windows and, uh, and, and pop back, stop, and then more where you can get into some detailed settings. So let's say while PhoneDog's loading, like I don't want to wait for this, let's go to new window. We'll load up the mobile version of CNN. And while that's loading, I can say, oh, you know, I just have no patience whatsoever. I'm an angry man. Uh, let's go back to Phone Dog in that voice. And you can see Phone Dog's already loaded. Now, pinch to zoom, for the most part, you know, it's been a little bit laggy uh, thanks to the slower processor. Uh, and again, you know, it's a mid range device, so don't expect the world out of this. And again, it's running, it's Android 2.2, so it is running Flash. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're comparing this to something like the HD7 or the Surround or the iPhone 4 or another Android 2.1 device uh, or a device that's running Android 2.1 rather that slowdown is primarily related to flash which you can turn off in the menu still this is what it looks like for somebody that's getting it out of the box and it is you know ever so slightly laggy nothing to uh, complain about too much or write home about it's certainly usable but may frustrate some on the other hand we can go back to our windows and see our mobile CNN homepage and you can see, you know, overall functionality with the exception of pinch to zoom is spot on, you know, very fast. So touching back on the uh, LG customizations to this, you know, the LG has some specialized widgets that you can put on one of these seven home screens in addition to the stock Android widgets that come with the device. We can see, for example, alarm clock, 
Bing, which is more of a Verizon thing, but still Bing is on there. Bookmarks, data usage, which again is a neat Verizon feature. You know, Verizon separated their data plans, and they offer a tiered option at 150 megabytes or an unlimited option for 30. So for those people that are on the 150 megabyte option, it's nice to have that data usage widget so you can see in real time what you're using. Dual clock, messaging, my status, status, <laughs> and uh, Slacker Radio, weather, and more. So let's take a look at messaging, for example. That's what it looks like and uh, actually what's on that home screen as well. So we'll delete that. But just to give you an idea of what LG's widgets look like, I mean, they're not my favorite personally. I, I prefer Sense's widgets. I actually like Moto Blur's widgets a lot, uh, or Motorola's applications platform widgets. That's a mouthful. Uh, you can put on put Memo on there, for example. And they're pretty neat little LG widgets, uh, while not you know completely taking over the operating system like Sense, TouchWiz, Moto Blur does. The uh, LG's little customization options here are, uh, are nice but still preserve vanilla Android for the most part. Let's take a look at this and you can see in the notifications bar uh, five icons at the top. Your sound, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and uh, I'm not sure what that one does. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, data, turning data on and off. So you have the data, uh, GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and, uh, and sound as well. So nice to have those up there. You know, they're pulling a touch whiz to an extent there where you have the, uh, the standalone buttons on the top in addition to uh, the typical Verizon wireless ID and things of that nature.